Welcome to episode 26 of the Ride and Inspire Rawcast. Today I'm not taking you on a walk because it's really hot here at the Costa Blanca. I'm back from two and a half months traveling through Europe, coaching over 300 riders. And we have, uh, well, it's very loud outside because of, I think you pronounce them cicadas. So it's a zzz sound and that's why I'm inside today. And I'd like to talk about a topic with you that has been, well, uh, in my mind for a long time and it's about the topic jumping and how I believe that it's a topic that unfortunately can be very dangerous for people and how we can make it less dangerous. I'd like to start this episode by reading a comment that I got below one of my mini jump tutorials on Instagram and um, it's a comment, well I'm just going to read it to you and then I'm going to talk about it. The comment said, Thank you for this, I can attest to the risk. Even though I'm an experienced rider, I signed up for a beginner's clinic in Colorado to build up the downhill runs. There were only a few of us, so they let us choose what we wanted to work on. One of the participants, not me, asked to work on jumps. After some brief explanation, we were on trail. I pulled the instructor aside and mentioned that I felt that I was over my head. We then did about an hour of practice jumps and learned more technique. And to the instructor's credit, I did feel like I understood it better. On the next run, the first two jumps went well, but third one got me. There was a built-up lip that may have thrown the back wheel in the air, but I think it was equally possible that I softened my legs early like you show in this reel. I landed nose first and then hit hard on the left side. Even with full body armor, I had 14 rib fractures, a collapsed lung and shattered collarbone, six days in ICU, six months till full recovery. Please get dialed with good instruction before taking on big jumps. So it's a very sad story. I followed up with him and luckily he's back and all well. He's healed up and he's taking it slow. He's back to small jumps, but of course it took him a long while to recover. And I wanna talk about this because this has been on my mind, as I said, for a long time. And I hear this so often from people I work with, either on jumps or other skills and from other also instructors and in bike parks when people talk about it. So jumping, in my opinion, is the skill with the highest cost of error. So small errors can have a huge negative consequence, just like this story of this person. And that's why I think it's so important that we instructors, we acknowledge our responsibility when we're teaching jumps and that you out there, when you want to learn or if you want to learn jumps, that you take it slow. And that's why I want to talk about this today. And I, that's why I do my podcasts, all of this, because I want to raise awareness for how learning as an adult actually works and how we can learn all the skills that we want to learn, but that we need to follow a specific protocol and that we need to allow our body and brain the time they really need to build that coordination, to build the finesse, to be, build the strength, to build the anticipation and to build those skills and to build the timing to then take it to skills where the cost of error is very high. Because the problem is that most instructors out there coaching jumps, they learn to jump as a kid. So they have this knowledge based on a body feeling, based on a body intelligence that is, that is rooted in their childhood. So most of them do not cognitively even know what they're doing. And even if, if they have analyzed it, and even if they have broken it down and know what they're doing, then most instructors that I've worked with in the past, either when I was training them, when I was certifying them for the BICP, or when, I, when they booked a course for coaches with me, and also other coaches that I've met and exchanged ideas with, they admitted that they're missing the parts that feel hard for their clients. So if you're learning to jump as an adult, then things will feel hard for you, that for these people who grew up with jumping, they are no brainers. So for you, just a mere front wheel lift will of course feel hard if you're learning the sport as an adult. And for this person, it's like, 
Yeah, well, just do a bunny hop. Just lift your front wheel. Just go fast and pull up or just send it. For them, it's a no-brainer because they grew up with it. And even if they do break down the skill, the prerequisites for this skill for them are absolute no-brainers. So they will not even think of teaching you the prerequisites. They will teach you the skill straight away because for them, they don't think that anyone cannot know this. They are in this unconscious competence. So for them, it's automatic and they don't know what they know. Just like I have already have an episode that links to this that I'm going to link below where I talked about the four stages of learning and the highest stage is unconscious competence. So you, you're doing something and you don't know what you're doing. And that's the ultimate goal because you'll be flowing down the trail, doing all the things but you have no idea. So you're not thinking about them. You're just performing the moves. And while this is the goal, these people who are in this stage usually are not good instructors because they don't know what they're doing and they don't know the prerequisites for the skill and they don't know how to teach it, which is a whole different skill than riding well. What we always need to keep in mind is even if we understand what we want to do, then that does not mean that our body can perform it. So watching a YouTube video about jumps, even if you've perfectly, or even if the instructor or the YouTuber has perfectly explained every single step of the jump, and even if you've understood all of the steps, then it does not mean that you know how to perform these. And that's why everyone who will say improve your jumping skills in 30 seconds or in one hour and four hour is actually doing false marketing because your body and brain will not learn lasting movements in a few hours and not even in a few days. And as jumping is the skill with the highest cost of error, you really need to have all those movements dialed in and you need the nuances of them really ingrained in what people call muscle memory because only tiny body positioning mistakes can cause serious injury or even worse. And that's why in my professional coaching experience, adults need to work their way up to jumping patiently and skills instructors should really acknowledge their responsibility by working on jumps with their clients long term versus making false marketing promises like learn to jump in four hours because it's just not how our body and brain work. As an adult it's just neurologically and anatomically impossible to learn lasting movement patterns. You can learn random movement patterns in a few hours but you cannot learn lasting and really, let's call them settled movement patterns. Movement patterns that will work like a Swiss clock, that will be the same every time, which are essential to jump safely within a few hours because you need coordination, you need timing, you need strength, you need skill, you need experience, you need finesse. And all of these in combination make up jumping skills. And these require dedicated practice over weeks to months. And you need sleep in between to consolidate this um, just like you need more than a few days to build a biceps in the gym, right? And I know we don't want to hear this because there are so many one-day jumping clinics out there, but it's just your life you're gambling with. And that's why I want to raise this awareness for especially adults learning this skill. Yes, kids can go out, they can play, they will crash, it's okay. But if you're an adult, at especially at an advanced age and want to learn jumping, then please take it slow. Also, I recommend to learn the bunny hop before learning to jump because your body then has tools to actively angulate the bike in the air. It has intelligence to adjust the takeoff, which actually decides about 90% of the trajectory, and it has the strength and grit to build upon because practicing the bunny hop will take time, will build strength, and will require grit. And that's why those are all things that you also learn when you learn jumping. And that's why 
I always work with my clients long term and I don't give single day skills, skills clinics or coachings like a few hours. You can't even book them with me. It's always long term coaching because it takes deliberate practice over time to really build those movement patterns, to ingrain them, to avoid injuries and to build those reliable motor patterns, not just random motor patterns. And we can do that in a consequence free environment first before taking these patterns to high risk environments. But that is essentially what most people are doing. They're building, let's call them random motor patterns in a risk free environment because most coaches will train with you on a parking lot or somewhere first, but then immediately they will take them to high risk environments like jumps on trails and try to apply them there where the cost of errors is super high. And that's why I work, as I said, I really work with my clients long term and that's why I want to send the message out to you and to the world that take your health serious enough to take it slow and acknowledge that you need to put in the work, you need to practice regularly to learn skills like jumping or bunny hops or nose pivot turns or riding really gnarly trails. You need to practice in a risk-free environment first, build the motor patterns, consolidate them through practice over time, and then you can take them to high-risk environments without them being dangerous. But if you do it too quickly, then yes, you may break 14 ribs and have a collapsed lung or worse. And that's why I really wanna bring this out, out into the world. I'm not doing this to be a nerd. Well, maybe I am a nerd, but I'm actually doing this because I care about you. I care about mountain biking. And I know mountain biking can be such a gift to find our authenticity, to find what does us good, to find what nourishes the soul and to have a lot of fun, but only when we're not risking our life by following quick tips and progressing too quickly. If you like this podcast, then buy me a coffee or become a patron. You'll find the link below. And do leave me a comment below this. If you're watching on YouTube, you can comment, comment directly below this episode. And uh, you can also contact me over Instagram. Share the podcast with someone you may believe it helps. That's all I've got for you today. Sending you my love from Spain. I'm Roxy.